Well, good morning, everybody. Well, we survived the holidays. Got back from our trip from Colorado, and it's time to go back to work. I actually got back to work yesterday. But anyway, it's time for another bay day today. All of our corn is gone, but we got about 40,000 bushels of soybeans that we've got to, got to get delivered. First truck just arrived early this morning. So we'll go ahead and crank these beans up and get, and get the beans loaded. We got our bins stored in these uh, first two bins. We got about uh, 17,000 bushels in uh, this bin. We got about 23,000 bushels in that bin. Let's hope all this starts up good. Open it up just in a small flow, just to uh, get it uh, slicked up in case there's any moisture in the system. We don't want to stop the elevator up. Yeah, you see all that water coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Not good. All right, I think we've got, got the problem figured out. For whatever reason, I don't know why these uh, the the augers uh, dump, dumping into the loop choked up. I don't know why, because I only had it opened up about halfway. Shouldn't have done that, but in the process of trying to unchoke it, the starter right here got fried, so I had to go. Uh, so I had, so I had to go to town and grab another starter. So hopefully it's fixed now. Give it a try. All right. We got uh, one auger is unchoked, but this one's still going to be in. It's still choked up. Pulley's not wanting to turn, so we'll just keep bumping it to see if, see if we can clear it out. Loosen it up a little bit. All right, we've been bumping this thing back and forth quite a few times, hadn't made any progress, so we took the cover off. And that's what we're dealing with. She is plumb solid right here. So about the only thing we can do is just to uh, keep on just trying working it back and forth and hopefully it'll loosen up and clear out here before long. I think we're getting close. Maybe 
another few times. Come on, baby. I think we might find, finally have it, so this is, uh, we set the elevator on. We're gonna try one more time. up and running all it took was uh, about a hundred dollar starter some muscle labor and getting shocked by 480 volts sorry I didn't capture that part on camera for you it woke me up pretty good this morning though anyway we're gonna we got about 40 uh, we got about 40,000 bushels to get out of here over the next next week or so and hopefully we get a pretty good paycheck well, Zach's working on getting that truck loaded up. I'm gonna run grab me a quick bike to eat cause another truck probably be right behind here. Always nice to see a payday on the farm, see some product going out and getting a check in return. However, this one's gonna be a little bit bittersweet. Uh, I contracted all of these soybeans for $9.75 a bushel. Which I did that back in May, I believe. Which at the time I thought I'd done great because last three four years or so soybeans have been hovering in that uh mid eight dollars to nine dollar range might get just a little over nine dollars there so i thought i'd done done real good however the current market price of soybeans is about thirteen dollars a bushel uh ever since harvest began all throughout harvest and especially last week soybeans have just steadily risen uh, the trade agreement that Trump uh, got with China has really started to come into play. The, the Chinese demand has really improved. We got a uh, lower yield prospects in South America that's cutting into the world supply. And just uh, all of those factors have really, really contributed to the soybeans going sky high. So I'm selling these soybeans for about three and a half dollars less than what I would, I could be selling them for. But that's the uh, that's the thing about farming. You just you don't ever know what the market's going to do, and sometimes it does some absolutely strange things. The fact that the market rose, you know, three to four dollars all throughout harvest and right after harvest just very very rarely happens. So we're going to make a profit on the beans, but it sure would be nice if we had some extra beans to to sell to sell, to sell for th for about thirteen dollars a bushel. You know, you try to make try to make good decisions with uh, the information you have at hand, and at the time I did. Ultimately, it didn't play out that way, but that's the way it works sometimes. All right, that's the first truck of the second round going out for the day. Uh, apparently, uh, another big long line at Bungie again. 
We got number two coming in right behind them. Well, I think that's truck number five for the day. Beans are going out quickly. However, we got our first uh, two tickets back from the first two loads this morning. And just as I feared when I was combining them, beans are dry. We've lost quite a bit of weight and quite a few bushels just from the moisture level being down so low. The first two trucks we hauled off were of our double crop beans which were the dry ones and uh, they tested nine and a half percent moisture whereas we can sell them up to 13 percent moisture without a dockage so you know, we're losing three and a half points of moisture weight that we could have we tried to blow some moisture in on them on our double crop beans but we just didn't have enough time for the moisture to get all the way to the top so hopefully once we get down towards the bottom of that being right there the the moisture will pick back up some and hopefully we gain a few bushels but tell you what with that uh, with a with a price spread between what i booked them at and what they're going for right now plus the uh, you know the low low weight because of uh, low moisture it's uh we, we found out what what it was a pretty good crop could have been a really great crop so but that's the way it works in farming sometimes all right, in between loading trucks and fixing grain bins, this is also what we've got going on today. Uh, we're creating some fertilizer prescriptions for our crops this spring. Uh, with a run up in prices that I was talking about earlier with uh, soybeans and the corns following the way, I expect uh, fertilizer prices and other input prices to go right on up with it. So uh, our local co-op has, uh, has a real good prepay uh, pricing period right now to where we can lock in our fertilizer prices. And fertilizer prices are actually, actually pretty reasonable, but if we wait until this spring to buy our fertilizer, the price could be, could be quite a bit higher. So we're going to take the opportunity to go ahead and lock in our fertilizer prices now and, and hopefully we'll, we'll save some money. But in order to do that, I've got to figure up how much fertilizer I'm going to need on all my farms. I could just kind of guess it what I'm going to need, but then I might order, I might actually buy too much or I might not buy enough. So we're going, going through today and, and, and writing our fertilizer prescriptions to figure up exactly how much fertilizer we're going to need. So I've covered kind of the, the gist of this in uh, another one of my videos, uh, how ag technology works creating variable rate fertilizer prescriptions, but I'll just give you a real quick overview of, of what we're doing now. So if you look at this farm right here, uh, this is just one of our farms and each one of these points on here is a soil sample point. We uh, grid sample our soils on two and a half acre grids. That means we pull one soil sample every two and a half acres. And as you can see, uh, we're looking at the uh, 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 we're looking at the potassium base saturation layer right here and this is what we're writing prescriptions for is, is how much potash we're going to need or how much potassium we need to add to the fields and uh, we variable rate all of our all of our applications uh, because if you look at these numbers here uh, you know you got 4.4 base saturation here you got 2.7 base saturation here and 2.9 here. So you know, we got variable levels of nutrients all across the field. So if you got variable levels of nutrients all across the field, it doesn't make sense really to apply, to apply, to, to apply a uniform product. We want to be able to variable rate the product as we go across the field. Uh, you know, the basic principle is to apply the right product in the right amount to the right acre. Uh, some of these, if we put out a base application, a uniform application, we'd be over applying nutrients in some parts of the fields and then under under applying in other parts of the field. So we want to variable rate this application as we go across the field. To do that, we take, uh, we take the results of our soil test and we apply a calculator to it. And it'll figure up how much, how, it'll figure up how much we need, how much fertilizer we need to add to reach our target. And in this case, what I shoot for is a 5% base saturation of, of potash that uh, is generally a, generally recognized as a, as a pretty good level. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to click on our crop zone here. And go up here to uh, fertility, advanced nutrient recommendations. 
and say I've already got all this set up. I've done, I've done it in previous years. We're going to click on this uh, recommendation here. We're going to open it up. All right. And we're going to select all the crop zones that we're going to need, which in this case, we're going to be doing all of our corn, cotton, and soybeans crop zones. We've got those in. We're going to select our calculator here uh, that we've al already built and imported in. We've got it selected. Uh, right here, our target base saturation, we've got 5%. And the layers we're using to base the information off of is our most recent soil test right here. So then we're going to click Run. And then uh, right here, we have, the, we have the opportunity to either run it on this one field or run it across multiple fields. So to speed up the process, we'll just go ahead and select uh, Go ahead and select all of our fields. Well, we don't need to select the ones that have got wheat on them because we're not going to be fertilizing those. All right, now we got all of our farms selected. We're going to have corn, uh, soybeans, and cotton. Click OK. Uh, we're going to name our layer. Got that in there. Then we're going to send all of this to the nutrient formulator. And then we're going to let it work here a minute. So not, not only does doing this allow us to be uh, to be more cost efficient, you know, we're not spending money where we don't need it, but we're spending greater money where we do need it. You know, it allows us allows us to either save money or be more efficient with with our money. Uh, it's also better for the environment that we're not just you know over applying nutrients that we don't need that could potentially be leached into the water supply or or in or into the or into areas of the areas of the field that's uh, you know borders that's you know grows up in grasses and weeds where it doesn't need fertilizer anyway so it minimizes our impact on the environment which we really believe in so it's it's going through it's creating it's adding the different farms into the nutrient formulator as the calculations are being performed now we got uh, two different types of prescriptions we're going to write we're going to write ones that where we're using chicken litter and then ones where we're not using chicken litter because the chicken litter is going to provide about 113 pounds of, of potash equivalent to the soil. So we're going to write the uh, prescriptions for the ones where we're not using chicken litter first. And then on the ones that we've got unchecked, we're going to go in here under other applications and, uh, and put in the put in the chicken litter so it subtracts the value out of the prescription. So anyway, the ones where we're not going to use chicken litter, we got them checked. We go over here, we got to select the product we're going to use. Potash. Uh, we already got our minimum and maximum set points set. Uh, got the minimum set point at 50 pounds per acre, and it'll step up in 25 pound increments. Then we'll round it to the nearest uh, 50 pound mark. All right, send to. All right, we got our uh, we got our layer name here. Let me change that to no litter. And then we're going to send it to the variable rate fertilizer export. And this one doesn't take as long. All right, we got the four farms on there. Now it's time to export them. And it's going to export them into a file that our uh, monitors on our tractor can use. Do a generic shape file. Select the folder that we're going to right there. All right, and then we're going to click export. All right, looks like it finally finished. So let's go see what the maps look like here. All right, here's all the prescriptions that were. Uh, that were created. Each prescription has five separate files. Uh, that's how a shape file works. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. All right, so here's our summary. Oh, it opened up on the screen over here. All right, here's a list. Here's the summary sheet of all the of all our, all our farms. And if you look uh, if, at the application right here, you can see it's very different and it's just dependent from farm to farm. You know, this farm requiring an average of 258 pounds an acre of potash and uh, one right beneath it's requiring 137 pounds an acre of potash. So, you know, just goes to show you that a blanket application just really doesn't make much sense. All right, there's a, 
end of all the farms. Looks like we're going to need a total quantity of 86 and a half tons of potash. So that's what we need to order is 86 and a half tons of potash. All right. Let's give you an idea of what the maps look like. Well, let me find some one with pretty good variability here. All right, here's one with a here's a farm with a lot of variability. Got some decent bottom ground around the ditches, and it's got some real thin hill ground. The variability is pretty uh, is is pretty is pretty variable on the farm. And anyway, here's our legend right here that's showing all the different rates going anywhere from 50 pounds an acre all the way up to 500 pounds an acre. And then you look at the colors right here. And then uh, you know, a big reason for uh, like I said, a big reason for the variable rate is that some areas of the field don't need any fertilizer. They got plenty in the soil and that's represented by these black areas right here. Right here is where we're not gonna put any any potash at all because it just doesn't need it. But then you see this black area doesn't need any and then you got dark green, you know, right next to it that's requiring, you know, 500 pounds per acre. Just goes to show you the, the variability we can have across, across our field. So, you know, let's see. Average application rate is uh, 253 pounds an acre right here. So if we just did a 253 pounds per acre blanket application across the whole field, we'd be putting out 250 pounds more than what we needed right here. And then right here, we'd be putting out 250 pounds less than what we needed. That's kind of a glimpse into some of the technology we use. It's come around in the last 10, 10 or 20 years that, uh, you know, not only does it, uh, not only does it improve the potential for profitability on our farm, it's also pretty good for the environment to make sure that we're only putting out the amount of product that we actually require to, to grow the level of crop that, that we want to. So, uh, Anyway, uh, we've gotten our potash prescriptions done now. We still got to do lime prescriptions. We got to do uh, phosphorus prescriptions. We got to do seeding rate prescriptions. So uh, we'll get uh, we'll get on into that in, in the in the coming days. So I reckon I'll uh, end this video right here. We had a pretty good day so far, even with the grain being uh, being broke down. I think we got off seven loads of soybeans. I think either six or seven loads of soybeans. So we got our, got our potash prescriptions done, and we got our grain bins fixed. So you know it's uh, getting getting close to quitting time. Rick and I'll uh, end this video here and head to the house. Appreciate all y'all watching. Uh, be sure to stay tuned. We'll be back again soon.